is evil. Bald is evil. It's Dr. Death. And what, what comic did Dr. Death appear? Oh, Lord. Detective. Detec Batman. Detective Comics number 30. 1939, Dr. Death. Well, here's a little name in my pile. Somebody called the Joker. These two people probably know a little thing or two about the Joker themselves. Yeah. You know, I was looking at one of the original pages from uh, Batman number one. And there's the Joker in there. And he's sitting in a room. And he's sitting in a high back chair with his fingers like this plotted. The imagery was so, so, how do I put it? So lasting. It's last of the eternities. We have that image now of supervillains, don't we? Sitting in their high back chairs, plotting. Please look at that picture, it's, it's incredible. See this black and white picture of the man who laughs? He is a spinning image of the Joker. Exactly, exactly. It's okay, call it an homage. It's okay to beg, borrow, steal. Just give people credit. Like uh, Nolan and Hardy should have given me credit for the Bane. Come on now, you all know Bane in the comics was a luchador with a ski mask on. Why suddenly in the new film he's bald and speaking with a distorted mid-Atlantic accent? Did I mention the glove on one hand? I'm just saying. Hashtag. He helped push all those comics. Because who was Captain America fighting? Hey, out Hitler. I think Superman's even taken out Hitler a couple times. So Hitler is important, but you know, you can't always do stories about Hitler. <laughs> so they have the Red Skull appearing in Captain America number one. I think he was played excellently by Mr. Hugo uh, Hydra. Hydra. Hmm? In Hydra, yeah. Hydra. He was very good. I, I felt like he was doing a Schwarzenegger impression the whole film, but I liked it. Yeah. But the comic book villain, I think, that puts it all together, who has superpowers, a metallic look, a hood, a cool name, Dr. Doom. Doom is the ultimate supervillain, isn't he? And I, I have to be a, 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 honest with you, I was never even a huge fan of him, and I still recognize that. Dr. Doom appearing in 1962, Fantastic Four, number five. Now I just have the chameleon mentioned here as one of the first supervillains from what comic? The chameleon, Amazing Spider-Man. Technically, the first villain was arguably Amazing Fantasy number 15, and it was but a robber. I didn't want to mention him. He wasn't very super. If you ever get a chance, you like to read, read the short story called The Most Dangerous Game. Okay, it was released in 1924. The film is 1932. It's a storyline you've seen many, many times, also in The Hunger Games, which is Man as the Hunted. Tell me you haven't seen this film in many different forms. I give you five minutes to run away and then I will hunt you down. It's called The Most Dangerous Game. It's a short story. The villain is Count Zaroff. Please look at the film version of him. Now keep in mind Count Zaroff's Russian. He has a black goatee, black hair, and hunts. It is suspected that yes, he is the impetus for the character Craven the Hunter. Nothing's original. Don't be shy to beg, borrow, steal. Gordon. Why do I like Ming so much? He has the long, wispy beard and mustache of Fu Manchu in the shape, though. Good Dutch, too, man. I like the way he dresses, you know? It's hard finding super villain clothing. It's not like there's a, a mall to go through with this sort of thing. Guys, you ever seen those super, ever see the super villains? Well, I guess they're not super villains. How about Snidely Whiplash with his stove pop hat? You ever wonder where this this stereotype comes from? These are the robber barons of the 19th century. These were men of money and power. They were the ones kicking you out of your house because you didn't pay the rent. I don't care if you have eight kids. I don't care if it's the depression. My house. Well, this picture of this rich elite man became the stereotype for these sort of mustache twirling vi villains. And an actor you want to investigate is Todd Slaughter. From 1935 to 1940, he was a live human dressed with the coke and the, the walking cane and all of that. Again, if we had the visuals here, it would be so much more entertaining. What can you do? We'll move on, shall we? Don't forget, we're going to talk to Miss Finger here, the granddaughter of Bill Finger, the creator of Batman. I just have a few more and we're all- Woo! <laughs>
break it up a little. Bit. So there was a serial in 1938 called The Fighting Dolls. It starred a Dylan called The Lightning. It's about yay tall, all clad in black. Black shiny helmet, black cape. It's suspected that yes, this tall man all in black was partially Lucas's impetus for creating Darth Vader. Sure, you know Lucas big balls, dude. It's all right. I like to give credit where credit's due, though, you know? Let's skip these guys. The last villain I want to talk about is Dr. No. Yeah. Last villain, but first villain in a movie series. What movie series? James Bond. James Bond. So, again, we have the Asian-esque villain in the vein of Fu Manchu and Ming the Merciless. He's got a groovy underwater uh, hideout. He's wearing a Nehru jacket. Yeah, you see a lot of your villains wearing these Indian high-collared shirts. Nehru jackets, yeah, it's all not too far off from a fire there. <laughs> but what's important about Dr. No besides his metal hands? Oh, his cat. Does he have a cat too? I think Blofeld has a cat. Blofeld has a cat. I, of course, have a dog. 